are the South Seas, six million square miles of warm water Pacific, its surface dotted with uncounted fragments of land lost in the wilderness of ocean. And this is my island, Matareva. Once it was a barren reef barely lifting its head above water. Then a piece of driftwood caught fast and rotted, sand began to collect. From distant shores a seed blew in and a tree grew. Then my people came and made it their home and after them came others. Until I grew up, I knew no other home but Matareva. Now I'm the school teacher of my island, and I remember how it was when I was a small boy. We were a people without joy, an island in chains. This is the way we live. Twice a day, morning and evening, we were forced to attend prayer, and the wardens checked our names as we entered. There were the policemen of our village, and if a man were missing, he would be found. If a man and girl were missing together, we trembled to think of their punishment. The old songs, the old dances our fathers knew were forbidden. Our young women, who once were proud of their bodies, were taught to be ashamed. The natural laws of love were made a crime, even for husband and wife on Sabbath. Those hours before Saturday night until Monday daybreak were the worst. No frivolity was permitted. No games, no play, no laughter. It was on such a Saturday afternoon, ten years before the Second World War, that there was a commotion in the street. A girl had violated her rule, and the man who was our law, our judge, the master of our bodies and souls, was about to render sentence. Oh, yeah. Mr. Corbettani, we have the girl Maeva. What is the charge, Warden? Two times this week, she has not obeyed a curfew. Last night, when we went to the house of her aunt where she lives, she was not there. The old lady would tell us nothing. Where were you last night? I repeat, where were you? I swam out to the reef. For what reason? The night was beautiful. You know it is a sin to stay out after nine o'clock. Were you alone? No. Who was with you? Answer me, my Eva. Who was with you? A turtle. A young turtle. Halalogo! <laughs> For breaking the law, 20 mats. A week carrying sand for your insolence. <laughs> Why did you come to Matareva? Well, I was bound for Rarotonga on that boat, and we were blown off course. This looks like a nice, quiet place, so I figured I'd try it a while. What do you intend to do here? Do? Oh, just live, I guess. There's no place to live, no houses. 
What's the matter with one of those leaf huts? Uh, I'll build one. I'll speak very plainly, sir. White men are not welcome in this island. They corrupt the morals of the people. You the pastor here? God guides my actions. I advise you to get back on that boat at once. You mean swim? Oh, there! Come back! Warden! Warden! I'm back! I'm back! I'm back. Looks like I'm stuck here a while, whether you like it or not. When's the next boat in? Not for four months, but you're leaving immediately after the Sabbath. What are you talking about? On Monday morning, a canoe will take you to the neighboring island of McKinney. McKinney? That's a swamp. Nobody on it but six people and a billion mosquitoes. That, sir, is no concern of mine. Now, wait a minute. Well, I'm not asking for the keys of the city, but I'm not taking orders from any Chubby at Mussolini. Who are you, anyway? The agent? Cobbett is the name. Thomas Cobbett. And I have full authority on that Areva. Well, that's great. Let's make a deal. You leave me alone, and I'll leave you alone. Now, get out of my way. Wardens! Seize that man! I'll beat it before I get mad. Kill the whole of you! Go to your home! Kill the whole! I figure I'll stay a while. The name's Morgan. And that was how Mr. Morgan came to Matarev, like a piece of flotsam washed by chance on our shore, perhaps to stay and become part of us. Perhaps to drift away again forever. We didn't know. That is my valley. You can come inside and rest if you like. My son speaks well. Come in. My wife, Pomana, is making the evening meal. We will be happy if you stay with us. Well, that's fine, thanks. bright night like this, what do they carry lanterns for? All young men and all unmarried girls must carry lanterns wherever they go. Even to practice the hymns you hear now. That way the wardens can know if two young people go over long. What's that? One cannot keep a secret on Matareva. The wardens have a caught a girl. Our own people become so cruel. Mr. Corbett gives them rights. And they do things he himself does not know about. Things I'm ashamed to tell you about. How did Cobbett ever take over in the first place? Twenty years ago, he came to make a small copper business. He came because his father was the missy here. The what? The missionary. A man of goodness and great power. The Reverend Cobbett. Such power that the government gave him the right to rule. And then forgot about us. And when he died, Mr. Coppert became the law and twist his father's rules until they strangle us. Don't see why you didn't kick the old buzzard out long ago. We haven't lost our strength. We haven't forgotten our warrior grandfathers. One time, we planned a big rebellion, but my own cousin betrayed us and told the wardens. Serves you right for trusting people. Don't trust them and they can't let you down. Do you folks mind if I turn in? Uh, Povana has led a map for you. Tomorrow I will give you tools to build your house. Well, thanks. Don't you think that's a bit risky, putting yourself out for me? Perhaps I'm foolish. I still trust people. Sleep well, Mokintane. Good night, ma'am. Good night, kid. Mokintane, where do you come from? Oh, Tahiti, Stuva, up here. Honolulu, Seattle, Detroit, and points east. You have a great man in America. Hmm? You have a great man in America. Uh, President Hoover? I mean, Siaki Temesi. Who? Siaki Temesi, the child who fights for a prize. Oh, you mean, you mean Jack Dempsey? Yes, a brave man. One who destroys his enemies with one blow of his right hand. 
Morgan Tani. Perhaps you two are a fighter for a prize. A man without fear. Mm -hmm. Let him go to sleep, Tonga. Yolina. Look, haven't you boys had enough? Yep. Bless us evermore. Amen. We will now listen to the word of Mr. Corbett. Children of Matareva, this has been a week of wickedness and evil. The forces of the devil have scattered his seed among us and defied the laws of salvation set down on this island by my blessed father. I speak not only of the guilty among you, the withholder of the tithes, the female among us who bear their bodies and invite the sins of the flesh. I speak of a stranger who has come into our midst, an infidel who, like Lucifer from the gates of heaven, shall be cast into the pit. Mr. Morgan! Now what? Do you mean to continue desecrating the Sabbath? Look, Cobbett, why don't you go home? That, sir, is your only answer. Can't you see I'm busy? Hey, quit that, are you crazy? Wardens, everybody, pull down this temple of evil. Come on, all of you! Come hey, on. cut it out! Hey, look out, she's gone! You'll learn to respect our rules. You know, Cobbett, you're wackier than I thought. Furthermore, you'll join the procession when ordered. You'll attend late vespers this evening. Never should have let you out of the booby hatch. For this. All right, who's going to help me stick this up again? My father put those windows in. No man can escape you here, Morgan. No man. Well, what do you say? You knocked it down. You. What do you say? Help me with this pole. Huh? No one must help him. I warn you. Now, Mr. Morgan, you'll see what it means to be alone in your sin. I will help you. Morgan, seize that girl. 
Carpet, will you stop trying to seize everybody? Waltons, do your duty. Now, that's enough. Anybody who doesn't want to work, get out of here. Go on, beat it. Go on. Go on, get out of here. Both of you, your souls will rest in hell. Who are you? Maeva. Okay, Maeva. Bring the hammer and let's go to work on this temple of evil. Kalali. Curfew! 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 Come, Maeva. My name's Morgan. Kimling Crater, your friend and servant. Have you got any 12-gauge shotgun shells? No shells, too bad. No shells, not, not even in your warehouse? No shell, no gun, too bad. Too bad, well, give me uh, a couple of tins of beef, and two cans of beans, and uh, a couple of cans of fruit. Too bad, Mr. Morgan, I have it. No can sell you, too bad. What do you mean, no can sell me? No can sell you. Mr. Corbett say no. He making big trouble to me because I sell you. Well, I don't care what Mr. Corbett says. Look here, this is the money I've got here. Let me just try to tell Maria. Okay. What do you think of that? He says he can't sell me. Corbett's orders. Hey, you know what, Papi? Are the ear to ear near Papala Selua? Okay. Check. Okay. Thank you, thank you, girl. Well, thank you. are smarter than any lawyer I ever had. Please. Thanks. Thank you. So long, Bye -bye. Time. See you again, girl. Well, come on if you're coming. Yes, Mr. Morgantani. Can I come and help you tomorrow, too? Sure, if you like. I would come at sunrise. Good night. Good night. Time. Well, what's this, a lodge meeting? Sit down. These are my friends. We are having a big talk about you. Me? Honey, to a little tele. But why are you copet? I like to have a little tele for a penny more more. To he says that you were brave to challenge Mr. Coppet. No one has ever been so brave before. You're all glad. Even Tonga feels honored to pay Mr. Coppet's fine for every night to sleep here. Has he been finding you? Well, why didn't you tell me? Here. No money, Morgan Tane. What I want from you is something larger. Say some man to five tali tali lavas to have five pay, oh, eh? To he says that we haven't been waiting for a man like you. What for? Will you help us fight against the wardens? Don't be silly. I didn't come here to fight. I just want to be left alone. But, Morgan Tane, here you will find no peace. The wardens would never let you spend a night in peace. Well, then I'll do something about it. Good, Morgan Tani. You shall be our leader. We shall have a great rebellion. What do you mean, we? I was talking about myself. Anybody pushes me around, I'll fight, but I'm not getting dragged into your squabble. But if the wardens... Listen, Tonga. I remember my old man, always sticking his neck out to save the world. Crazy Irishman fighting for the cause. He ended up in the Dublin gutter with his head bashed in and my old lady scrubbing floors. No, sir. It's one thing I've learned. Every man for himself. I'm going to bed. Morgan Tani. Morgan Tani. Morgan Tani, wake up. Come quick. Something bad. <laughs> Mata, mata, 
You're a pretty sight. When did this happen? Last night. The warden came into her house, but she didn't want to come to you about this. All right, give me some fresh water and clean rags. Go on, ladies, go home. Quite a shiner you got there. You hurt much? No. Come on, Maeva, we're going for a walk. I had an aunt once in Pittsburgh who used to get one of those every Saturday night. Don't worry, there's nothing in it. Havana, keep the coffee hot. I'll be back for breakfast. Okay, Maeva, which one was it? That one. With your lies. I didn't touch her. She fell on some coral. Will you keep it there, really? Here. I showed you how to use this. If any of them come at me, shoot to kill. touched him, Cobbett. The man had an accident. Fell on some coral. Joe Holmes! Joe Holmes, everybody! To work! We were still in chains. Only Mr. Morgan had one right to live as he pleased. To our surprise, however, it pleased him to live alone. It may seem strange to people not of our island, but we could not understand this. My mother was commissioned to look into the matter. Talofa, Morgantani. Talofa, Povana. The way you cook that fish, it will be dry as a coconut husk. I like it dry. It brings out the flavor. It is a man's place to catch fish, not to cook it. I have a big question to ask you, Morgantani. Do you not find the women of Mata River pleasant to look on? They're all right. Do you not find them desirable? What are you driving at, Mama? A man needs a woman to make his meals, to sweep his floor, to mend his clothes, to light his lamp when night comes, and blow it out when it's time for bed. Not this man. Listen prettily, Morgan Tani. Listen pretty yourself. I've been all through that. They start as you cook, and right away they feel they own you. Use you for what they can get. Thanks, Mama. I'm fine the way I am. You offend the people of Mata River. Well, that's tough. You are empty and sour like Mr. Corbett. Worse. I leave you to your fish. It will taste like seaweed rotting in the sun. My mother was a stubborn woman. She was not easily put off.
When did you get here? Not so long ago. Your meal will soon be ready, Mr. Morgantani. That wasn't bad. Someday I'll cook palola for you. I'll take you in my canoe when the moon is dark. I'll teach you to catch them. Look here, don't you have a sweetheart? Somebody you like? Young men of our island are without courage. You mean to tell me you've never had a boyfriend? In the old days, every young girl knew love from the time she was 15. Then when they married, they no longer had the desire to know other men. Where I come from, a girl can get into trouble that way. In the old days, our girls had babies first to show that they would make good wives. Well, that's something. Cobbett stop. Some things even Mr. Cobbett cannot stop. It's getting late. Your shirt is torn, Mr. Morgantani. You better go home now. Tomorrow I will mend it. I said go home. Mr. Morgantani, it is no good for you to live alone. See? I brought my things. Please, not till after dark. The village will laugh to me. Okay. Only till the lights go out, here. Only till the lights go out. What's up? Paeva, the warden took her to the jail. Where's the key? The key is from Mr. Cobbett's house. inside, you fool. The wardens were sent into exile for good. Some said, well, a late tell good riddance. Some said, things I'm reluctant to repeat. But the wardens never came back.
Astonishment, our island did not sink beneath the waves. And when he attempted to scold us for our new ways, we smiled at him as if he were a foolish child. You're sinning! All games brought to us by an English missionary, long before the Cabot's time, were revived. Watch this, and I'm going to kill her. to believe. Here we were at church, not because we were made to go, but because we wanted to. Stay in this position, I won't need new pants. By the way, you ever been to that island north of here? I forget what they call it. Tulati. It's a bad place, Morgan Tani. Filled with the spirits of the dead to ate their enemies. I hear there's good pearl beds. That 170 bucks I came here with won't last forever. 
What are the atolls like to the west? Not as pretty as Matareva. 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 Don't you ever get sick of this place? Oh, never, Morgan Tommy. Don't you folks ever take a vacation? Travel? Oh, yes. Next month when the schooner comes, my aunt will go to visit her brother in Rarotonga. She will come back. Everyone comes back. Have me one of those drinking nuts, will you, baby? Mark and Tommy, tell me about America. Is it good there? My aunt heard a story once. They said that in America, they have little cages which take people up. As high as the clouds. It is not true, is it? Sure, it's true. Are there tins of meat? Taro and coconuts for everybody? Here, no one is hungry. And the young girls, Morgan Tani, are they beautiful? Beautiful. Mm. Every single one of them with, with strings of pearls all around their arms, all up to their neck. Morgan Tani, I will tell you something strange. Before I saw you, all white men looked the same to me. <laughs> That's what white men say about you people. Did I look the same to you as all other girls? Well, maybe a little fatter. Maybe a little more bow-legged. Look, Morgan Tani. Hey, not bad. <laughs> I'd like to see you walking to church with that on. To carve it would be red in the face. No, Morgan Tani. Today we'll not go to church. Today is for swimming in the lagoon or lying quietly under the trees. And tomorrow, I will buy you a new comb. <laughs> You're a good kid, my Eva. Hey, you know that wreck of a boat out at the point? How long has that been stuck there? Three years, maybe four. I think I'll take a look at it. It might be worth fixing up. It wouldn't have to depend on a boat putting in here. In case I got tired of this place. Well, so long, Mayo. Looks like a pretty big job. What do you think, kid? I think I'd better go back. Time for church. Okay. Good evening. Oh, Cobbett, how have you been? My Ava, I want to speak to Morgan Tani, alone. Go outside, will you, my Ava? Well, I haven't seen you since the big night. What's on your mind? Sit down. I've hesitated a long time before I came. I'm sure you can understand why. At the shadow boxing, Cobbett, I haven't anything against you as long as you leave me alone. Morgan, I want the truth. How long do you intend to remain here? Well, that's a silly question. How should I know? For one year, five years, ten? I don't like to be pinned down by anybody. Or any place. Here, have a drink. What are you running away from? Sure, I'm running away. If you learn a few simple rules, keep moving. Don't get too close to people, you'll get kicked in the teeth. And don't depend on anybody but yourself. You're wrong, Morgan. There's a higher power. Why did you come anyway? Because they stopped your Sunday lectures? I came to talk about my Ava, but I'm afraid it's useless. What about my Ava? Living this way is destroying her. You're out of your mind. She's never been happier in her life. Will she remain happy? Oh, believe me, Morgan. I've seen how white men behave in such situations. They all face three inevitable tests. First, do they return the devotion these brown women give them? Second, when they're seen by their own countrymen, are they ashamed to introduce them? Last and most important, have they the courage to marry the girl? My Eva, she doesn't care one way or the other. Why not let her decide? Still going around running people's lives, huh? They're my children, in spite of all that happened. 
As long as God gives me the strength, I'll try to help them. You're a stubborn old buzzard. Let me talk to my Ava. Call her in. What the devil for? You're afraid. My Ava! My Ava! Come in, child. Sit down. He wants to ask you something. My Ava, I came here to tell Morgan Tani he should marry you in church. Would that please you? Speak up, child. Would you like that? Yes. Now, Morgan, you see? Good night, Cobbett. Any decent Christian woman wants to be married. I said good night. You said your aunt was going to Rarotonga when the schooner came. You want to go with her? No. The idea, I can do it. Hey, what's the matter with you? We have a tapu, Morgan Tani. The father of a baby pierces the eye of the coconut. The baby will be born blind. Go blind trying to sew in this light. I could make you new pants for you, Morgan Tiny. More beautiful than sew pants. See? Like in this book. I'll wear them on my yacht. Loose of the cook of Mr. Cobbett makes his pants on a sewing machine. Look, my Ava, I am not interested in Mr. Cobbett's pants. Would you like to play the pinochle game you taught me? Sure. Nothing like two-handed pinochle on a rainy day. Tomorrow the sky will be blue. Matareva. The land of sunshine. The jewel of the South Sea. Morgan time. It rains on other islands, too. How would you know? You've never been off this two-foot hunk of swamp. I know the sun will come out soon. And then we will fix the roof. And then we'll begin work on the house. Work on the house? Soon we'll be needing a bigger house. Another room to... What's the matter? Can't you hold your cards? I will try. I'm sorry, baby. I'd, I'd better go out again. Might as well get good and wet this time. Will you come back to the evening meal? Better not wait for me. Tub, is she? She's very pretty. Look, kid. One of these trips, I'll be coming back with a pearl as big as a coconut. You'll be the richest woman in Monterey. Yes, Morgan Tan. Well, the tide's going out. I better get started. Nothing must happen to you, Morgan Tan. Stop worrying. The season of the hurricanes is coming. The shocks in the pearl beds, evil spirits at night. Well, they won't do much damage. I'll be back in two weeks. It will seem like two years. Morgan Tani, the tide. All right, my Eva. You better get off now. Yeah, yeah, you. The Lotava.
Yes, Maya. Is there a doctor, someone who could help? Maybe on Savai. There is a man who works in a hospital there. I already sent a canoe. How long do you think it'll take? Two days, maybe three. Life to your new daughter, Mokintani. gone away. Take it easy. I'm right here. I wanted to give you a boy. But the girl is pretty. Her skin is light like yours. What do you want? I came to help, if I can. Go on, tell me she deserves it. She's being punished. Morgan. You'd like to see her die, wouldn't you? So you'd be right. Keep still. This is no victory for me. Sometimes even I rebel against God's rules. I know what sorrow is, too. I saw my father die on this island. A year later, my wife, weeping in her last hours because she could never bear me a child. I think I would have liked a child, even more than being a minister of the Lord. Tell her which doctor to shut up! Let him sing. Perhaps just this once, God won't mind a little help. Did the boat? Not yet. Come, we will walk together. I brought you something, my Eva. Mokintani. How beautiful. In a couple of days, you'll be making me new pants. More beautiful than straw pants. I was thinking, if you want to get married, it's okay with me. As long as I have you, it is all I want.
Take care of her, Pavana. I'm going away. Where will you go, Morgan Tani? Stay with us. You belong here. You came and changed our life. You love one of our women. You were part of us. Stay. Aloha no for Maya. What do you want? To bring gifts for you, Morgantani. Gift? To give you strength to love her in death as you loved her in life. So Mr. Morgan vanished from our lives as suddenly as he came in. And as the years slipped by, we took delight in a new member of our family. We loved her as our own, and her life was as happy as any island child. What is this, Bonisa? That is a picture of a basket. What is this, Sabai? That is a pizza of a basket. No. That is a picture of a basket. This is a basket. All together. What is this? That is a pizza of a basket. She grew handsome and strong full of spirit. If any youngster hunted turtles out of season or got into mischief, it was always to fear. When the time came that I left home to go to school in Upolu, I was happy to go, but I didn't like parting from my family. Turia was like my sister, yet not my sister. When World War II broke out, the face of the Pacific was changed. I was in Apia during those years. And then one day, I saw a face out of my childhood, far in the past, yet so plainly remembered. Not once through the years had we heard from him. There were rumors that he'd made a fortune in Malay and lost it in Fiji, that he still traded in his old cutter, but somehow he had lost reality. Mr. Morgan was a legend. Excuse me, Mr. Morgan? I guess you don't remember me. Rory. Rory? From Atareva. Rory! Well, how are you, kid? Sit down. What are you doing here? I've been going to college for two years now. College? Well, good for you. Studying very hard so I can go back and take Mr. Cabot's place as school teacher. It was he who sent me. The old man's still around, is he? He'll always be around. He was very kind to my parents last year before they died. Died? Tonga? Kuvana? A warship stopped by and left a terrible epidemic. Thank heaven, Turia escaped it. Who? Turia? She okay? She's growing up to be the most beautiful girl in Matareva. She looks like, well, the way I remember her mother. Uh, Rosie, more of the same. Maybe you don't believe it. We still talk about you at home. You're kind of hero like Mr. Washington in your own country. They remember. Look, kid, some other time. I'm sorry. It's just that I'm going back next month. Some other time, I said. And I thought if you had a message. No message. Bye, Mr. Morgan. Go far. Across the sea. It was hard to know Mr. Morgan's heart. Harder still to believe he had forgotten us as the rest of the world had forgotten. For in those years of the war, no boat would risk such a far-off voyage for so little profit. Yet somewhere he must have heard of our troubles, heard of Mr. Cabot's letter begging for medical supplies, petrol, a pair of spectacles for himself. And somewhere so deep within that he himself did not know it, an old dream must have stirred. Oh, 
What's the matter? Can't a man land here without getting his brains beat out? Why? Morgan's the name, Mr. Morgan. Mr. Morgan? The real Morgan Tiny? Morgan Tiny, it is you. We are so happy you came. Yeah, I can see that. See what goes on here. Is the warden still operating? No wardens. Not when me will look out. Mr. Corbett say be on guard against the Japanese. Even too much light's forbidden. Well, I saw a big fire up the beach when I came in. What about that? Oh, that we cannot stop. That is the young people. With you here, the Japanese will not dare to come. For my Morgan Tony! For my Morgan Tony! For my Morgan Tony! Hello, Mr. Morgan. Young Ling, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Kumari, welcome, Morgan Tani. Hi, Kumari, wish that Tonga would be alive to see this night. Good to see you, Kumari. This is a pleasant surprise. Had an empty boat and no offers. I figured this was better than waiting around. Here's a package for you. Oh, thank you. Come in. Come in. Oh. Oh, now I should be able to read again. <laughs> Mr. Morgan. Well, how's the schoolmaster? Holy! Hey, where'd you get a hold of this? Well, it took a great deal of persuasion, I can assure you. But when a destroyer put in here and saw how I'd organized our defenses, a complete lookout system, lines of fighters on the beaches, they finally gave in. But when it came to a question of firearms, alas, I was less successful. Firearms? What the devil for? We must be ready for any emergency. Oh, sure, Coppet. Absolutely. Oh, by heaven! It's your country, too, that's threatened. Midnight. Time for my report. <clears throat> Headquarters Naval Command. Headquarters Naval Command. This is Matareva calling. Matareva standing by. Over. Come in, Matareva, but make it fast. I don't this know what to do. Headquarters keep telling him not to talk so much. Hello, hello. Do you hear me? No. Hello, do you hear me? Then I'll fail it again just as I was getting started. Rory, see what you can do. Trying to run a generator on kerosene. I hope you brought us some petrol. Sure, two barrels full. How long you stay? Long enough to unload. Have you seen your daughter yet? No. She's a fine girl. A bit over-spirited, perhaps. I, I found her rather too friendly with one of the sailors off the destroyer, and I, I was tempted to punish her. Maybe you should have. Morgan, what have these years been like? Oh, I can't complain. Still on the run, are you? Rushing off to nowhere? Have your boys down early. I want to be unloaded by noon. If you'd care to stay here for the night. No, thanks. The boat's all right. <laughs> Life to you, Mokintani. I told them you would come back, but they laughed at me. Your father has forgotten, they said. You're Taria, are you? Yes, Mr. Morgan. Well, time you're in bed. It was such a pretty night. We made a fire and danced, and Lani and I swam to the point. Who do you live with? The widow, Teeny. Mr. Cobbett fixed it for me to live there. Well, where's her house? Over there. You aren't as tall as I thought you would be. Hmm? Oh, you aren't short either. 
Are you really as strong as they say to blow the jail down with only one breath? You better go in. It's getting. Good night, Mr. Morgan. following me ever since I got up this morning. That is the truth. Well, I've got work to do. I'll help you. Is there any school today? School is for a child. Well, go pick coconuts, sir. Go fishing. Fishing with me? Morgan has the strength of a hundred sharks. With one finger, he throws his enemies across the reef. You don't really believe that, do you? Of course. Throw a man that far, you've got to be pretty good. That is the truth. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I even make fun of my tama because they are not as strong as you. Your what? The young men I go to the beach with at night. Now look here, Turia. You've got plenty of time for that. Time for what? Well, well I mean, uh, take a steady fellow like Rory now. That's different. Rory? He is like my brother. What I mean to say is you're too young. My mother was young, too. What did she look like, Mr. Morgan? Was her hair long? Yes. And her teeth, were they very white? Very white. Was she a strong swimmer? I had a thought last night, Mr. Morgan. We will build a new house together. A big, beautiful house. I'm sailing this afternoon. This afternoon? I only came here on business. You don't understand. I can't waste my time here. I'm doing Rarotonga next week. When will you come back? I, I don't know. Where will you go after Rarotonga? Well, wherever there's a cargo. Take me with you. Don't be foolish, Taria. Forget it. Get it. I, I talked to Cobbett this morning. If you need any money, he'll take care of it. I, I'm putting out in a couple of hours if you want to come down and say goodbye. I don't want to say goodbye. I wish you had never come. There's a pretty bad storm out there, Mr. Morgan. We heard an army plane in trouble a little while ago. I'm not interested in the army. Bora, See if you can find out if they... Wait, seven. there he is. Bora, Bora, this is Army 457 calling. Over. Get Mr. Carver. Quick, tell him I heard the plane again. Army 457, Army 457, this is Madareva, this is Madareva. Bora, Bora, this is Army 457. We're in trouble. Losing all pressure in port engine. You read me, Bora, Bora. 457, this is Madareva. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Come in, Madareva. 457, can you see us? Can you land here? Monoreva, Monoreva, have you level airstrip? Have you level ground? We have no level ground. No ground long enough. The beach, could they land on the beach? Of course not. Tell them their only chance is to crash land in the lagoon. 
A hundred yards offshore. Crash on calm water 100 yards from shore. I can't get there before dark, Monterey. The Monterey, I can't get there before dark. What should I tell them? They'll never find the lagoon. Tell them we'll put flares on the motus and lights around the lagoon. Four, five, seven. Can you land if we put beacons around the lagoon? Monterey, Monterey, how will I know where the shore is? Come on in, you fool. There's no place else to go. Look for red and green lights. Head between the green and land short of the red. Get a hundred men ready with canoes and pick up all the lanterns you can find. Kim Ling's got plenty. And try to find some red and green cloth or paint or anything. I can furnish the colors. I always felt there was a reason to save these. Five seven four five seven. Everything's ready. Lights all set. All set. Pilot, God will bring you in. God is riding with you. Favoros, <laughs> it's all right, you jokers can laugh. You know, a miracle did happen. I know it sounds incredible, but after you gave me final landing instructions, I turned to the boys and I said, well, here we go, I'll meet you in St. Louis. And so help me, I heard a voice as clear as I can hear yours. And it said, have faith, God is riding with you. What'd the voice sound like? It was deep, powerful, speaking right to me. Yeah, that was a miracle, all right. A miracle that never could have happened without all you people here. Today we found what every stranger has found at these enchanted islands. A courage and a hospitality which, as a famous writer once said, springs from the untutored and spontaneous outpourings of your hearts. Oh, 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 oh. Terrific for the words, that favor. That's poetry for the air transport bulletin. Think we'll attempt to bypass the Carolines? Well, confidentially, sir, I'm just a truck driver with wings and a colossal ignorance of strategy. But one thing I am certain of, if anyone can strike hard and fast, it's something... Uncle Sam, excuse me. Say, speaking of miracles... Hello. Do you want something, Captain? Well, I'm glad you asked me that, honey. Well, you're like an angel rising from the flames of hell. That's how you looked when I first saw you. I'm no angel, Captain. My name's Harry. Harry? Yes, Harry. Taria, honey. I have a feeling of knowing this island in my dreams. Of knowing you for a long, long time. Of seeing you before. Of being in love with an angel like you. Morgan, if you still plan on leaving tomorrow, you'd better forget it. I've just heard a report of another storm on the way. That's funny. My glass reads clear. Oh, well, I can only tell you that what I saw looked very bad. You take my advice, you stay right here.
What is it, honey? What's wrong? Please, Harry. I don't know. Nicest people in the world, these people. You know, I bet a fellow could come here after the war, open himself up a little business, and laugh at the world. You wouldn't have time for business. Not the way you danced tonight. That wasn't all dancing. A lizard called up my lava lava. I should have worn your shorts. You've got no dignity. Only man this outfit has dignity is Harry. Where is Harry anyway? Where do you think? I know where I'd be if I had a cute little dish like that. My Morgan, what are you doing at this hour? Didn't feel much like sleep. Hey, where's that hurricane you told me was coming? Hurricane, did I? Oh, yes, Redfern went out to sea. No pressure area shifted over to the north. Hey, get a load of this. There's a poem he's writing to Taria. My angel of the flames, I have loved the fair Taria when the moon was on the wane. And I have kissed her lips divine, and I... All I can say is, if I know Faber, he'll be making a three-point landing by midnight. You know what I heard today? That old beetle puss Morgan was her father. You're kidding. Morgan. Well, that's a fact. She's his daughter by a native woman. Only he's ashamed to admit it. Where is he? Where's Faber? I don't know, sir. Come on, fellas, uh, let's take a walk. Huh? It's hard to keep secrets in Matareva. A low-down, sneaking rat. Oh, not, not really. He's more like one of those birds of passage. They think it's part of growing up to see strange places and love strange women. But whatever their reasons, it's hard on the places and very hard on the women. You knew about this. Why didn't you stop it? Because I wanted you to. So help me, I'll kill him. Well, that's an absurd solution. Well, he'll marry her, I'll see to that. Nonsense, I tried that once too. Morgan, once I would have rushed in to wield the rod and never look beyond. Now I'm not sure. Look, Cobb, are you telling me to stand by and do nothing while he breaks her heart? No, Morgan. But if you interfered and ran off forever, can't you see that you'd wound her more deeply than a thousand favors? Don't hurt the child, Morgan. Unless you're prepared to stay behind and heal her. Good night, Harry, dear. Oh, let me come in just for a little while. The widow Teeny. Look, you told me she was with a sick friend. She won't be back until morning. Just for a little while. Yes, I did, sir. You better get out. We don't want your kind on our island. Do not listen, Harry. Keep out of this, Taria. I didn't save your life so you could make a fool of my daughter. You smart guys come down here like birds of passage. It's too rough on the women. Oh, wait a minute. Wait for what? You're coming back and settle down after the war, are you? Forget it, Harry. I'm leaving in the morning and you're going with me. I'm sorry, sir, but the Navy's sending a boat. I have orders to wait. You know what you can do with your orders. See you, Mr. Morgan. Get out, Harry. Go on, it's finished. Harry, later I will wait for you. He loves me. He will marry me and come back. He's no good for you, Taria. Leave me alone. Go away. Please, Taria, listen. I didn't want to see you hurt. I just did what I thought was best. I, I know I haven't been much of a father. Go away. You are not my father. I never want to see you again.
If you could deliver this to the Naval Command in person, I'd be very grateful. It's all right. Any other letters? Everybody I know or care about is here. Well, I'll have someone bring a boat in before too long. Not you? Not me. I'll tell you something, Collett. When I came back here this time, I... It was like... Well, it was like coming home. And when I saw Turia, I... Well, it sounds crazy, I guess, but... I, way down deep, I... I didn't want to leave. I wanted to stay here with her. For the rest of my life. But that's out for good. Morning, gentlemen. Are you boys all ready? I got news for you, Mr. Morgan. You're gonna have to sail alone. How's that? Oh, don't blame me. Order some Captain Faber. He's decided to wait around for the Navy boats. Says, uh, after all, you have no authority around here. Where is he? Down at the lagoon. Tell him to have his crew on the wharf in three minutes or he'll wish he'd never seen this island and tell him I'm coming down in case he needs some help. Yes, sir. I'll give him your message, sir, but I can't promise he'll listen. Those half-baked punks. The people have already written a song in honor of their departure. They'll be very disappointed if they can't sing it. They'll sing it. Careful, my boy. You're not as young as you used to be. If you think I can, Of handle... course you can. You know, Morgan, I've often wondered how you would have fared with the wardens if you hadn't had that shotgun. You know, Cobbett, I'll tell you a secret. After those first two shots, it was always empty. Still is. only making fun with me. Now I have no one. You have Rory. And you have your father. I think you would like to say goodbye. Take her up. I'm staying home this time. 